We want to welcome you to our online service this morning. We are so glad that you have joined us. The opening scripture that I want to share with you today is found in Psalms 107, verses 1 to 9. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from the east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. I trust this morning as you have joined us that you have come thirsty and hungry for spiritual truth this morning. Let's pause for a moment and open our service with prayer. Father, we thank you today that we can come into your presence and know that you are here with us wherever we may be located today because you are with us wherever we are and we give you praise for that. We would ask that as we share in a worship time with Mark and Shelley this morning, that, Father, you will just anoint each one of us in our homes, that you will draw our spirits into your spirit. Father, that we can be encouraged by the singing of your songs and, and sharing in that, in that time of worship today. I pray, Father, as we'll open the word in a little while, that you, Father, will again anoint in a very unusual way. Lord, that you would open the word to our hearts and may Again, the truth that we need, speak to us, Father, we pray. Now we ask for your blessing upon this morning, and we will give you praise in that wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. We trust that as Mark and Shelley lead us into a time of worship, that you will join along with them and sing as they share in this worship time this morning. Jesus blessed Redeemer Savior 
When there's no one else to turn to, who do I turn to?
thank you, Mark and Shelley, for sharing with us this morning in music. Thank you to remind us that we can come near to the heart of God. Let's do that again and pause for another time of prayer. Father, we are so grateful today that we can come near you. We are thankful today for your care in each one of our lives. We thank you this morning for your hand upon us as, as a people today. Father, we thank you for those who continue to give care uh, to the many that have been sick. And Father, we thank you for uh, those who are on the front lines today continuing to deal with this uh, COVID virus. Father, we thank you for our leaders and those that give direction through our country today. And we pray that you continue to give them wisdom and strength and encouragement this morning. I would pray, Father, that you would continue to uh, minister to those that are reaching out. We think of our own caregivers here in the church. We ask, thank you, Father, for them. And we pray that as they continue to reach out to uh, the church family, that, Father, you will continue to use them in a very special way. And we thank you for this opportunity to uh, make phone calls and connect with each other in a different way. But, Father, we thank you for the many positive uh, responses to that that have been happening. And we give you thanks and praise this morning. As we gather here today, we also are reminded of the many needs that we represent. First of all, Father, we bring to you the uh, tragedy that happened in Nova Scotia last week. Father, it has uh, devastated the country. There's been uh, so many uh, lives that have been lost. And we would pray that, Father, you would minister to those families that are mourning and grieving the loss of dear loved ones. And Father, that you would help those that are investigating and that you would, Father, uh, just bring good out of something that is so tragic to our country. And we would also ask today that you would continue to be near uh, some of our own family, church family, that are not well physically. We would lift them up to you today. We think again of, of Christine Nichols. We ask, Lord, that you would touch her and her body. We think of Reverend Ken Snyder today. Lord, continue. We think of Kenton Dempsey's mom. We would ask, Lord, that you would minister to her and her need today. Father, again, we just pause and thank you that we can depend upon you in these challenging times. And now, Father, we just uh, commit each one of our lives into your care and trust you and thank you for what you're going to do in that precious name of Jesus. Amen. For our scripture lesson this morning, I want to once again turn to Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 8. Do not be anxious, but pray. The scripture reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Last week, we began a series of messages that's focused upon ways that we can deal with some of the anxiety that we see in our own lives and in the people that we live among. Even as I went to the grocery store this past week, I was reminded of some of the tension and anxiousness that's happening in the lives of people. As I walked away from picking up some meat from a meat bin in the store, I heard a commotion happen behind me, and there were two grown men who got in a very heated verbal argument over one of them getting too close to the other one. Why would two mature grown men act this way? Because they are anxious. 
because there's tension in their life. And it didn't take much to set that tension into a negative reaction. Last Sunday, we spoke about one of the ways to help us not be anxious was to spend time rejoicing. Rejoice by remembering what you believe. God is sovereign. God is in control. God is near. He knows what is going on. We also talked about rejoice by changing your focus. Spend time focusing upon the good things that are happening around us, not just the negative reports that we often hear. For a few minutes today, I again want to visit this portion of scripture, and particularly I want to look at verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. While I was in a Zoom meeting this past week with some of the other pastors, one of the pastors shared with us that he has received random phone calls from people in his community. These people have called because they're anxious and afraid, and they're reaching out to the pastor to spend time praying for them. Yes, this is a time to pray. As I sat in that meeting with those other pastors on the Zoom, on the computer, there were others that shared they had started Zoom prayer meetings, and they were being quite well attended. Even one pastor mentioned, I think they're better attended than they would be if it was held at the church on Wednesday night. But again, we need to pray. Paul shares with us some of the things that we can be praying about or how we can pray. The first truth that I notice here is Paul says in every situation. In the first couple of verses, Paul's reminding us that God is sovereign, that he is gentle, he's merciful, and that he is near, he's in control. But now he changes the focus to remind us that we also have a part to play in this. We are to pray. I find it interesting that often we wait till we find ourselves in a crisis to pray before we pray and think of God. It's like, um, okay, God, I've used all my resources. Now I guess I need some of yours. I wonder what would be different in our lives if we would pray and then act. I wonder how many crises would be avoided if we would pray before we act. Remember, Scripture tells us, if my people will humble themselves and pray, God will heal our land. Oh, how we need to pray today for God's healing of our land. So what are you facing this morning? What is it that you need to talk to God about? I love the scriptures that tell us God is listening. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, read like this. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have that what we ask of him. Another scripture, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. When I read this scripture, I think of a God leaning out over the windows of heaven with an attentive ear listening for the cry of his children. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 reads like this, 
Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Oh, friends, today we can pray in every situation, everything we face, we can bring that before a God who's interested and wants to listen to our cry for help. Paul then goes on and says, pray, petition, request. One writer has put it this way. The terms prayer, petitions, supplications, request are similar but not identical. Prayer is a general devotion. The word includes worship and adoration. We've been doing some of that already today. We've worshiped, we've prayed together. Supplication suggests humility. We're the supplicants in the sense that we do not make demands. We simply offer humble request. A request is exactly that. It's a specific petition. So we lay out our need as the best way we know how. I love the story of the blind man that Jesus healed as he was alongside the road. It's an interesting story. Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do? That seems like an obvious need, but Jesus wanted to hear it from his lips. I want to see. So often we tend to pray in a general way. God bless everyone. God be near to those that we love. God supply all of our needs. But one way of dealing with anxious thoughts is, God, this is my need. I need help. Max Lucado says that a Pacific prayer is a serious prayer. I need this. Pacific prayers give us the opportunity to see God work. When we see a direct answer to prayer with our faith, our faith grows. And then those things become landmarks in our life where we say, remember when God did this? As a church family, we've been praying for a man that was involved in a very serious accident a few months ago. At one point, there was even very little hope that he would pull through the event, but he did. Then he was also told that he would never walk again. He would have to spend the rest of his life in a wheelchair. So we began to pray that God would help him to learn to walk. God has done that. The day that he was released from hospital, he walked on his own to the car that was waiting for him. Yes, it has encouraged our faith as a church family. It's encouraged us to ask boldly the needs that we represent because we have seen God work when we've asked for specific need. A specific prayer creates a lighter load. When we talk to God about everything we are thinking and planning to do, he can direct us in our, in our plans. Lord, this is my concern for the day. Lord, this is my schedule and plans, but please make it clear to me, what is your plan? What is your schedule for my life today? Lord, how will you help me carry this concern that I have? First Peter five chapter, First uh, Peter chapter five verse seven says, "Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you." It's okay and encouraged by Scripture to keep casting our anxiousness on the Lord, my friends. Even if it's multiple times in a day, the Lord never wearies of hearing the prayers and the petitions and the requests from his children. His ears are open to our cries. A third thought this morning is pray with a thankful heart. 
When we pray, and even before you see God moving, pray with a thankful heart. Thank you, Lord, that I know your spirit is carrying out your plan. A heart that gets focused upon what is not happening will become an anxious heart. But a heart that is focused upon the blessings that we see uh, all around us, anxiousness begins to have to flee. One of the songs that we sing often at one of the services that I, that I conduct in a long-term term care facility is count your blessings. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings and see what God has done. Verse one says, when upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged. God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. As we remember to be thankful for what God has done for us, it will often help us not to be anxious in our present circumstances because we remember what God has done. In closing this morning, Paul writes to the Philippian believers these words, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to the Lord. Friends, do you find yourself with an anxious heart today? Take some time and pray. Let God hear your heart. Be pacific, Lord, this is my need as I see it. I can't see a way out. I need your intervention. Then begin to praise him even before you receive the answer. God's ears are turned your way. He is attentive to his children's cry. Let's pray. Father, I don't know who is listening this morning, but you do. I don't know about their heart today, but Father, you know every heart of the individual that is listening to this video today. And I would pray that if there's an anxious thought in their heart, that Lord, they will take right now and express that to you and allow your spirit to begin to work on their behalf. I pray, Lord, they will find those places of prayer that they can pour out their heart and life to you. And Lord Jesus, that you will take and change that anxiousness to a peace that will uh, sustain them and strengthen them in this time. Now, Father, we commit each one of our lives into your care today. And may you, Father, help us to come to you with every need we would have. And Lord, that we would, we would present that to you as only you are the one that can take care of every need of our life today. And again, we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Again, I would invite you to sing along with Mark and Shelley as they will bring a closing song to our service today. God bless. I faced a mountain that I'd never faced before.
to learn what we need to learn from these times of isolation. And Lord, our heart goes out to those that need you in our families, those that might be watching. We pray that you would touch them and let them understand that you are even doing this in love to get their attention. And I pray that you'd help them to submit their lives to you and to give you control. For you are so gracious and so loving. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to bow before you today and worship you. Amen. 